was so damaging when Trump said that he would choose Putin and actually encourage Putin to invade NATO allies. And why is Donald Trump so enamored of Putin? Well, part of it is he's a wannabe dictator. He even said the other day, let's uh, basically get out of NATO and, you know, encourage Putin to do what he wants. He said if an ally did not pay their dues, he'd encourage Russia to, quote, do whatever the hell they want. Reality check. Europe has been free riding on the American taxpayer and the American military for now close to, what, eight decades? And even though all combined, it still has a GDP pretty much matching ours, it's incapable of defending itself. The New York Times is even reporting that the Munich Security Conference scuttlebutt was that the most striking thing in the conversations about Russia was a widespread acknowledgement that Europe's military modernization plans, first announced nearly two decades ago, were moving far too slowly to match the threat that Russia now poses. Joining me now, Tulsi Gabbard, former Hawaii Congresswoman, Fox News contributor. Tulsi, um, Donald Trump said you have to pay your own way. That is your obligation, 2.5 percent of your GDP to your military. Most nations still haven't gotten up to that level. But Trump's the uh, pro-Putin sympathizer just for saying that? Yeah, Laura, you've, you've seen this tactic before when the Biden administration and Hillary Clinton and all these warmongers start fear-mongering. It's because they're trying to distract the American people away from what's actually happening. And when you look at what Trump is doing, he's talking about very real issues that the American people care about. He's talking about how the open, our, our open borders, Biden's open borders, are destroying our country. He's talking about the rising inflation. He's talking about rampant crime in our streets. And now with NATO, he is forcing the American people and NATO members to be confronted with some very serious and important questions. For us, what is the role of NATO? Does our membership in NATO serve our national security interests? And if it does, then how much are we, the American people, willing to put on the line in our taxpayer dollars and in American lives? And how much are these NATO members willing to put on the line in their money and the lives of their citizens? We cannot allow ourselves, the United States of America and the American people, to continue to be in this position where these NATO members expect us to put up our money. They expect us to put up the lives of my brothers and sisters in uniform to protect them when they're not even willing to do that for themselves. Well, I want to remind everyone what Donald Trump said about NATO, which caused such a huge controversy back in 2017. They never forgot this. Watch. NATO members must finally contribute their fair share and meet their financial obligations. 23 of the 28 member nations are still not paying what they should be paying. This is not fair to the people and taxpayers of the United States. Over the last eight years, the United States spent more on defense than all other NATO countries combined. He uttered that which you're never supposed to utter, that everyone's supposed to pay their fair share. Now, there's been some improvement, Tulsi, on this, but clearly Europe still, even the New York Times had to concede, and quoting those officials in Munich, that they're still not anywhere near that where they have to be if they think Lithuania, Estonia, Latvia, and Ukraine are going to be invaded by Vladimir Putin tomorrow. That's right. You know, it's interesting that, that Biden and Hillary Clinton and these warmongers, they don't want this conversation to happen. And they don't want uh, uh, this very simple question to be asked is, why does it take Donald Trump to try to pressure these countries into paying the bare minimum to maintain their membership in NATO uh, if, if they were really that concerned about Russia invading their countries and the, the safety, security, and well-being of their citizens? Don't you think that they would be lining up and, and making these investments in their own security, putting themselves on the line to defend themselves? Uh, this is a harsh reality that we need to be confronted with here in our own country, and these NATO members need to be confronted with as well. What do you think the reaction would be, Tulsi, if Biden and Kamala Harris and Blinken, they went around to college campuses and they basically made the pitch for the U.S. to go to war uh, for these, you know, former Eastern European countries. 
And I mean, do they think that was, I think that's going to work politically for them, that there's a groundswell of a desire for us to go really all in? Yeah, and, and this is this is really the the sad and, and sickening truth is that people like Blinken and Hillary Clinton and others who are so willing to go and wage these wars in other countries, they are willing to sacrifice other people's lives. I've been to Ukraine a few times. I went there actually during my R and R uh, during my deployment to Iraq in 2005. Made some great friends there in Ukraine who are terrified now that their husbands are going to be forcibly drafted to go and fight in this war. They are angered that the United States has stood in the way of attempts to bring about a peaceful resolution to this war. And once again, who is behind this and who is profiting from it? Ukrainian lives are being sacrificed, almost 500,000. And you have these people oh, who are fueling the military industrial complex saying, no, keep fighting this war because they're not willing to put themselves or their children on the line. Chelsea, great to see you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.